Welcome to the My Amazon Guy show. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy, and every Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time, I come and hear your questions and answer as many as of them I can. Well, super excited to talk to you guys today. Uh, we got Thanksgiving next week. No show next week as a heads up. Um, I do prioritize member questions or super sticker questions. So if you're not a member, you want to join today, just click that join button right underneath the video and you're welcome to do that right now. Um, or if you don't want to join and be a member, you just want to donate a five buck sticker. I prioritize those questions as well. And that's just because we get so many questions. I literally can't get to them all. Uh, apologies in advance. <clears throat> we'll jump right in. So Michael says, can gifts be used in A plus content? I don't believe so, Michael. I've never seen one successfully used. You can put a video in A plus content if you pay uh, an absurd amount of fees uh, for Amazon to enable enable that feature for you. But the standard A plus content does not include it. Thinking of launching a size variation of my product, but unsure of how well it will perform. Should I create a variation listing with my existing product? or launch as a separate listing and combine later. Um, so I would always incre include a new variation, like a size variation inside of a new parentage 100% of the time, no exceptions on a size variation. Um, once both items do well, then you might want to separate them out because the reason parentage is such an interesting conversation is because when you parent things together in most categories, the reviews combine. Right. But when um, when you combine the, the products in search results, they're also combined. So if you have a really good brand and multiple of your products rank really well at high velocity, you actually don't want them parented in many instances, because by parenting, uh, by not having them parented, you could show up multiple times in the search results. So if I was able to rank one, two and three for the term funny wine glass, I wouldn't want to parent those because I'd only rank once instead of all three times. Great question. Jeff, good to hear from you. When I try to update content, I get this response. The attribute you've requested updates on has already been claimed by another representative of the brand and the ASIN is currently listed under. So uh, Jeff, if you are the brand registry owner of this product, I highly advise that you load a UPC. If there are multiple sellers of this item and you're not the brand registry user, you're SOL on this most likely. If you are the owner and you're the only seller and you have brand registry and you're still having problems, it's almost always because the UPC field is not filled in. There's a lot of different reasons this could happen and we can troubleshoot it for you. Um, and, and, there, and there's a bunch of other things I didn't mention that this also could be. This is definitely one I would hire us for a coaching call on because we can dive in and figure it out pretty quick once we have some eyeballs on it. Um, for those that don't know, my coaching rate right now is discounted. I'm normally $500. I was $500 from January all the way up until October. I lowered it down to 300 just because my team was getting slammed and I was trying to help out. Um, so we're at $300 for the rest of the year. If you guys want to file a coaching call, I do have one or two slots left for today. Um, but any listing problems, I'd go to Saban first, although he is fully booked out until back from Thanksgiving. So you might have to upgrade to one of our other coaches uh, to get some catalog help today. Uh, what is the solution for this? Well, I, yeah, I gave you a big explanation on that. Michael, I know a variation, uh, listing can be difficult to deal with. So I'm afraid to start off by coming, combining them and having to separate them later if a new variation doesn't do well. Uh, so, so Michael, uh, I would always combine them initially and separate them out later. It's very easy to separate products out of their parentage. You can just literally delete the parent. It's really not a big deal at all. Um, super easy to delete. It's actually harder to combine them later through some template work. Um, it's not bad at all. Ovo, thank you for the super sticker today. Appreciate it. Let's see if we can find one of your questions here. So we'll go to you next. I purchased it and the listing was taken down because of design infringement. I found out the person with the design patent is also my competitor who also got the product from my manufacturer. So a design infringement comes down to who had the product up first. So if you can look at the launch dates of your item, compare them against your competitor, you might be able to get it back online by just simply stating, look, mine was up first. He copied me. Uh, in addition to that, you can also provide uh, any, any design or imagery. So if, if you are the creator of that imagery, they, they, uh, they don't have anything against you, right? So design infringements are the very easiest to fight, Ovo. Um, it, it, it might take a couple of tickets, but you should get right back up. It's really not hard to fight at all. 
My manufacturer said they designed it, but can't do anything because the other person patented it. Okay, so it was an actual patent. Uh, now they're trying to come down a solution with a competitor that we sell for in the same price bracket, which seems fishy. I have 1,600 units order. I'm getting worried. Any advice? For a patent problem, uh, you just took a, you, you went from easy to almost impossible. Um, very, very difficult to fight patent issues. So what you could do is explain how your item doesn't violate their patent or you can say that, hey, you know, you've been buying from the same manufacturer, but I don't think that will be, th this is one I'd go to a, a patent lawyer on over to be totally honest, um, which is going to be expensive. You're looking at a few thousand dollars, uh, but but that's that's the true answer because uh, I'm not, I, I don't, anytime we go into the patent sections, it just, it gets very, very murky um, and you have to figure out like how you don't violate the patent, but you sell the same exact item. So you probably do violate the patent and, and that's a problem. So um, what I would do is probably look on for the next product and get out of that one um, because you're, you're looking at thousands and thousands of dollars to uh, get a challenge on that. Eugene says, can I ask you a question in email? Yes, you can. Um, feel free to use the uh, option right on the website here. Ask Stephen Pope a written question for 50 bucks. I'll give you a lot more in-depth of an answer than I do on a typical call here if you want. Um, this is one of our super fans. Bought one of our T-shirts, took a picture, gave us a little testimonial. Hello over there uh, to Matthew. And maybe you're in the audience today. So let's see. We're going to go back up to the top here. Go to the next member question in line. David says, when entering in search terms, does it matter which ones you put in first to confirm no use of commas, right? So, so David, it used to matter the order of a keyword. It no longer matters. So it's completely safe. Go ahead and put them in any order you want. Um, this includes the search term field, also includes the title. Although if it's after the first 150 characters in the title, it probably does matter. Um, so I would put them in the first 75% spots when it comes to title. But other than that, nope, no longer matters at all. Uh, when adding search terms, do I need to repeat words such as sticker? Nope, you do not. This is something we cover in SEO phase one. We actually give out our SEO phase one guide for free um, just to get our name out there. And you can download it today. All you got to do is come to this website URL right here. You can find this by going to services, search terms, phase one, or just type in the link I just put into the chat there and then put your email in right here. We'll, we'll email you our multi-page SEO SOP on this. And we specifically call out, do not duplicate the words. So in this particular example here, do not put hair multiple times, put it one time. It permutates with every other phrase that follows it in the series in the search term field. So you don't have to include a duplicate at all. You do want to do misspellings, but plurals also don't even need to be done in many instances. Although sometimes we do put plurals in just because it's not indexing and we try it anyway and it works. So hopefully that's helpful there, David. Uh, scrolling down to the next member question here. So Drew says, hi, Stephen, my video was rejected. And I don't know if you mean video ad or live on the listing page. Feel free to confirm. The response, my ad contains dynamic content such as stars and customer reviews, which is not accurate to duration of my campaign. My video has neither of these. Um, so what about the packaging? Does the packaging have any reviews on it? Does, uh, does anything that you show like a website um, or any testimonials, whether it's by visual or by verbal, do any of those show up? Drew, I'd have to see the video on this one to really make a determination, but, but there is something in there that you need to remove. Um, one of the things you can do is ticket them and ask and say, Hey, which portion of the video, can you give me the timestamp where the violation is so I can remove it? Um, Amazon's also been doing video editing to help people clear their violations. They've been doing that for free. You could always request that as well um, to get it to go through. But I would I would say some ticketing is in your future on that one, Drew. I made a new listing for a product because the last production had issues. Can I send it to FBA, the new page with the old UPC sticker, or will it be received to the old page? Uh, did you make a new ASIN on this one, Mike? Because if you made a new ASIN, you would just make a new SKU on that ASIN. It would ship in just fine. And as long as you did that, you're good to go. Um, at, at some point, you could always merge the old ASIN in with the new ASIN. But if you if you have the same UPC code, it wouldn't have allowed you to make a second ASIN on the same UPC code. So I don't think this one's probably a problem, Mike. I think you'll be fine um, without any challenges on this one. Uh, is there a way to change a listing from Amazon barcode to manufacturer barcode? Yes, unless you are in a health category 
or you're in uh, a supplement or a consumable, all of those have to be F and SKU. If you're in like home goods though, or you're selling like a, a beer glass, like I've got here, this is the way my beer glass I sell. Uh, then you would have to uh, create a second SKU and on the same ASIN and flip it that way. You can't switch a SKU from one to the other. So you have to add a new SKU to the account. Got a, uh, another super sticker coming in from affiliate influencer. We'll go to this question next. I have a student that can't get approved to sell on Amazon to do fulfilled by merchant. She tried twice, can't get through. What should I do to make sure she does? So typically speaking, there's no decline on FBM applications. Like that's not how you apply for a Solar Central um, login. So I don't think that's what the problem is, Chris. Um, if the actual um, Seller Central application was rejected, that could be for a variety of reasons, including identity verification, location of the account, multiple account scenarios, a bunch of other things that could cause a problem here, Chris. Uh, but in general, uh, it's, it's much easier to clear an account suspension if you get an invite for the account to begin with directly from um, a seller rep at Amazon. And we do offer those to our clients. Uh, so if you become a, my Amazon client, you can open a second account very easily. We clear all the bypass uh, identity verification. The, the most important thing I would do, Chris, is I would look at the document and make sure that the full document's in screen. So if I just take my wallet here randomly, so see how you can see every edge of the wallet? This is just imagine this was the document, right? So you can't cut off any of the on any of the things. So, so don't just do like a tight shot on this where it like almost looks like it cuts off. It's got to be the full shot with some white space around it. That's the number one problem we see with getting declined. Um, feel free to give me any additional facts on this one, Chris. It's, it's a really hard one to speculate. Uh, there could be all kinds of things, but if it was the actual Solar Central account, I would check the identity verification step. That's usually the number one problem. Uh, appreciate your answers. Thank you very much, Vika. We appreciate you as well. Uh, let's go back up to our next member question here, going back into queue here. Wow, there's a lot of questions in queue. We'll see how many we can get through. Walmart is displaying a business address on the seller profile. Is there a way to put a PO box like on Amazon? Also, Amazon UK has the same issue. So you could put a PO box together, but generally speaking, they want the address to match um, the legal entity. And that's the challenge. So, so yes, you can put a PO box in. Um, I've seen it done before, but there there could be like a, a mild risk down the line. I don't think there's any risk today, but there could be a mild one later down the line. David says, as the days go by dealing with stupid support tickets. Let me just put my nice smile face on for you here, David. Stupid, stupid support tickets. Amazon is pushing me to sell no hassle items like paper and thumbtacks. LOL. Anyone else feel this way? Time for another Xanax. <laughs> David, you need some cheerleading today in your court. Never been easier to grow top line sales on Amazon. Never been harder to increase your margin and your bottom line right now. Um, but yes, silly tickets, definitely. Um, so the no hassle, there, I don't, I'm not sure if you're talking when you say the no hassle, if it's like the frustration free packaging, that's kind of an old hat thing. People don't really do that anymore. Um, but yes, David, you hang in there, man. Um, it, so, so David, if you don't have a team helping you today, at bare minimum, hire a VA to just throw things at the wall to file tickets for you. Can't that you cannot go wrong with that. Um, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, you guys engage my Amazon guy and become a client. But at bare minimum, at least get a VA. Cool peeps. Hi, Stephen. Happy Pope Day. Right back at you. My new items have not increased review counts for two weeks, even though a customer, not a friend, told me they sent in a review 10 days ago. Can a new listing be blocked for reviews? How to remove it? Yes, we see this all the time. We also see that Amazon sometimes will pause reviews for a 14 to 30 day window. Uh, this usually happens when you have a high velocity review count coming in, especially on a new item. They'll temporarily pause it. If you ticket this and ask Amazon anything about it, they'll just give you a copy paste response which has nothing to do with your inquiry. And no, there is no solution to this issue. You just have to wait it out. Most likely, if you wait 30 days, it'll self-resolve and no further action required. Unfortunately, no action can be taken on that one. Helium 10 says, my organic keyword is 800. My sponsor keywords is 550. You mentioned you'd like to see a two to one ratio. How do I increase my organic keyword ranks by 300? I'd love to see an ASIN on this one. 
Um, nine out of 10 times, it's always because you didn't add enough copy to your A plus content. Nine out of 10 times. Uh, the other one out of 10 times, it's because you haven't put alt text into the A plus content. But I know you're a super fan and I know you've probably already done these things. Um, so there's something else going on in this listing. Feel free to put an ace in and we'll take a look at it. We need to set up FBM for a listing to go out of stock. Can you, before it goes out of stock, can you have both FBA and FEM listings concurrently? Yes, you can. I have a, I have a, a video for you. Cool peeps. So duplicate SKUs, my Amazon guide. And when you go into Google, type in any Amazon problem like this with my name on it, my Amazon guy, and chances are I've got a video on it. How to dupl create duplicate SKUs for the same ASIN for the very purpose you just asked about. Great video for you. Here you go. Cool peeps. I will post this one in the chat for you. Duplicating MFN. That's the video you need to watch. And the second part of your question, how do you think about the shipping cost template for something that's under one pound? Any watch outs when doing FBM? Yes, you're going to pay more than your FBA listing. But if you're going to go out of stock, it's better to have something in stock at a lower margin. So in general, it's okay to charge for shipping, especially during Q4. I would charge about seven bucks if I were you um, to get it out the door. Last one, have you had any success requesting an increase of restocking limits? Yes, we have. We've had three outstanding tickets, but no dice. Thanks again. Um, it works even better if you have an Amazon rep you can forward those to. So if you have somebody at Amazon who who is on the, the team that can do that, they can turn those requests around under 48 hours. You want to give them a list of SKUs. You want to show the past history on why these SKUs sold really well last year. Anything you can do in those ticketing um, can be very, very beneficial. And then lastly, the only thing you do have control in outside of that is to increase your sales velocity so that you have a higher turn rate, which then gives you a higher restock limit. One of the stupidest things that happened this year is that Amazon made it so even if you have unlimited storage, you don't have unlimited restocking. They moved the goalpost. They changed the rules on us. No more IPI base. And that's because Amazon ran out of room. They also ran out of employees. Amazon is understaffed by about 35%. I made that number up. I'm just That's just what it feels like. Uh, and they're, they're also overwhelmed by about 35%. So they're upside down 60%, which is why they had to put some really severe things in. Now, the good news is, is back in October, I did see them catch up somewhat because, you know, maybe because everything's stuck at port in California, 100 ships out in California or whatever, because California is banning uh, old trucks from picking stuff up from the port. What's really interesting about the California port problem is, is they don't have a problem with getting stuff off the boat. That's not the problem. The problem is, is they don't have trucks to pick the crap up out of the port. And that's the reason for the backup. And a lot of people don't know that. It's pretty crazy. Uh, Steve says, hey, hi, hi, Steven. Happy Friday. Can you do a video showing us an example of a ticket submission to push changes through for a listing? Helpful to see your layout, verbiage, et cetera. So I do have multiple videos on this topic, actually. And essentially, the best way to do this today is to file a brand registry ticket. So when you're in brand registry, the type of ticket that you file um, can be very beneficial uh, to get titles updated, for example. So if I were to just screen share this, this is in brandregistry.amazon.com and you go into you know support, you can file a contact for them. In here on the drop down, you want to select listing issue, uh, which is hidden by my camera right now. So let's see if we can switch the screen. There we go. Uh, listing issue. Request a product detail page change and then type in the ASIN. So whatever, I don't know what ASIN this is. And in here, it probably is not going to come up. It's probably not part of my brand. You're going to select the attribute in question. So let's say title, hit next. And then you're simply just going to put your title in and hit the, hit the submit button. 80% of these are automatically uh, agreed to and they go through. So you just like, let's say you want to change out the word. You hit next, file the ticket, you're done. And then if they reject it, this is when it becomes harder. In the brand registry tickets, you want to reply to the ticket you already filed through the system and then provide them a website URL to the manufacturer's page. If you don't have a website, go get one. We can build a Shopify page for $2,000. Just go to myshopifyguy.site um, and we can build those out for you. And then you can also put a picture of the item. So if, I'm just picking up a random supplement on my, my desk here. If you take a random item, um, you try to update the title. And if you just take a picture and you show them the packaging, they will give you a little bit more legitimacy on the ticket. And sometimes you got to go through. So that's a, a really quick tutorial there for, for you, Steve. And I do have multiple videos on catalog management. I have a full playlist. Um, one of the cool things that we recently built, most people don't know about this one yet. In the very bottom left of my website, there's a footer link for all of our video tutorials. 
in here, we created a playlist for every of our common topics. We actually put this in alphabetical order just to make it easy for you. So we got A plus content, advertising, talk about the Amazon aggregators, right? So you go down the list, brand registry problems, brand store, catalog. So the list just goes on and on and on, right? We got so many different video topics. We even made a playlist for our weekly Q&A. So if you want to go back and see every Q&A we've done, there's a playlist for that too. I'll drop this link into the chat here. Check it out, guys. Uh, it's a lot of good value content. Uh, let's go to the next question. What is your company's core focus as per the, per the traction? So great question. So I love traction. It's on the side of my desk right here. If you haven't read traction, it's the number one business book. There's nothing even close to it. You got to read traction, highly recommend it. Um, and so our core focus is to help Amazon seller central sellers between 500 K and three mil. That's our strike zone. So that's our core company focus. We make it easier to grow sales on Amazon. Great question, Steve. What is your biggest mistake you made with PPC in your earlier Amazon years? I wasted a lot of money uh, trying to get certain types of ads to work when the, the, the user would not convert on those keywords. So that's probably the number one mistake I probably made. Number two is I didn't spend enough on ads because ads have a massive impact on SEO. So would you rather, have you ever played the game, would you rather? It's a fun game. Right. So would you rather spend a thousand dollars last year in PPC or a thousand dollars this year in PPC? It's a really easy answer. The answer is last year. Why? Because your dollar went 35% farther because costs are up a lot. So it's the same concept of plant a tree today. And you know, the, the the best day to plant a tree was 10 years ago, but the next best day is today. Same concept. So you got to spend money on PPC. We we actually recently had um, a, a, a client that we, we've been working with for 90 days, 90 days, been doing great work, catalog, merchant, whatever, um, building out all kinds of things. And they wouldn't let us spend a dime on PPC. And we thought they were crazy. Well, finally, uh, a week ago, they finally allowed us to run PPC for them. And we took their sales up 27% in less than five days, 27% just by starting to run PPC. And that was with test campaigns. This, these are unoptimized campaigns, things that we haven't developed yet. Just kind of just throwing something out there, right? So I already know that by you know next month, we're going to increase their sales by like 50, 60%. You know, obviously we're going to have the, the tailwind with us with the, uh, the, the holiday, but, but nonetheless, there's just such a great opportunity when you have um, PPC online. So you gotta, you gotta spend money to get along. Um, and I made a post about this particular example. I can't find it off the top top very quickly here. So I'll move on. Uh, last question. We had a pallet sent in months ago. Amazon lost 90% of it. Oh, thank you, Amazon. Let me pop that Xanax now. It's eligible for investigation. We opened the case, but it's been weeks with no action. Any ideas or answers? So Steve, uh, I'm a shameless plug here. If you haven't hired us for my refund guy, highly recommend it. Uh, this is an all included clawback service first 500 bucks completely on us just to prove it works because it does and and we take care of lost damage items refunds mishandled returns lost inbound shipments sign up today at myrefundguy.com um and to answer your question you 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 can keep filing tickets until they reimburse you 100 just what you need to do is you need to file a, uh, an fba ticket that doesn't go through their automatic system file a new one escalate the claim say hey you guys are supposed to pay us for this Big deal, 90% of our, our palette, totally gone. So uh, yes, definitely doable. Highly recommend my refund guy. Skyvora says, hi, Steve, what is the name of the credit company that loans us money to buy inventory? I don't remember it off the top of my head, but here's how I remember things. I always put all of my services that I like at the very bottom of my website in my third-party services. So if they're on this list, we have used them or a client has used them. Um, I don't think it was a crew me, but they also do, I think maybe it was payability might've been, um, can't remember off the top of my head on this one, but, but if you see them on here, Jubal, that also might have been them. There's a couple of ones on here that do funding. Um, not something I, I, I never have, have used funding myself. I always self fund everything. So that's not something I personally have a lot of experience with. Carla says, do you think the search gets suppressed if you raise your item by $3? So, so Carla, it's a percentage base issue. Um, not a dollar amount. So if you raise the price 30% from $10 to $13, you're going to lose some keyword ranks for sure. Um, they won't suppress you though, typically. However, 
We just put a video out yesterday where we basically called Amazon out on their crap and called them a giant monopoly because they were they were literally preventing us from having the buy box on an item and they locked the price on our own listing and they played super shady. In that video, I talk about how Amazon also deleted slash changed the text of the post where the client made the complaint in the forms. So they hid the evidence. Super shady stuff, Amazon. Shame on them. Um, but in but in terms of just regular run of the mill price raising, every, there's there's super bad inflation right now. It's way worse than the government admits. Uh, and if you and if you just pay attention, like you know, just look at the cost of bacon for crying out loud, fifty percent up. Look at the cost of eggs, that's twenty percent. You know, gas, that's hundred percent. Just all kinds of things that are up in price. So the overall inflation rate is significantly higher than the government is admitting. Um, so you have to raise your prices, but you don't want to do it all in one shot. You want to do like ten percent price increases. Um, and the best day of the year to raise a price is actually Black Friday. Why? Because traffic triples to the platform and conversion rate doubles. And so the best place to raise your prices is on Friday. Good afternoon from Lakeland, Florida. Hey, Kevin. Good to see you. Jeffrey says, are there any other ways to contact Amazon support other than inventory file upload issues to get to support? That's actually the best one, in my opinion. All other options seem to be a dead end. Yes, they've kind of They've really uh, gutted Amazon support in the last year. Made it a lot harder. Um, Jeffrey, I'd also highly advise using brand registry tickets, kind of like we demoed earlier. Um, you'll get a lot farther with those. Uh, let's see. So I think we covered Ovo's question. Uh, let's go to the next member question here. Not a question, but I just wanted to say thank you for your help in responding to a query I had about verification of my selling account. Appreciate you taking the time. To respond to me. You're very welcome, Michael. Uh, any news on the antitrust case? I haven't heard a thing. Uh, it's I think I think uh, I honestly Amazon's in bed with the government. It's going to go away, hundred percent. They're a monopoly. Uh, great to join you too, Fatimi. It's great to see you. Uh, hello to Raza. Let's go down to the next uh, member question coming in from Michael. Have you seen any situations where creating a parentage to create a variation of an existing ASIN hurt sales or cause other problems to the existing ASIN? Very rare. Um, the only time I've seen this as a problem is if you had to do like a data update and it triggered an, a robot review or a listing yank. But in general, nope, super safe, Michael. I would, I would play with parentage anytime. Uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, we got a lot of future member questions in queue here. I'm not going to be able to get to them all, but I'm going to try my best to get to as many of them as we can. If you want to get yours prioritized, hit that join button on the channel there um, or do a super sticker. I will jump to super stickers at the top of the list. Just started selling in Canada via NARF. That's the North American Remote Fulfillment Program. Every item being sold is being refunded. Any idea what could be going on? Um, that's hard to speculate on this one, Robert. So, so do you have an item that could be damaged or do you have an item um, that may, may be problematic in Canada, for example? Like maybe, maybe like uh, it's a, I don't know, maybe you sell toothpaste and the, and the caps are blowing because of the altitude changes or something like that. Um, what I would do is I would look at the, um, the refund report very closely. Uh, so you go into, go into uh, Amazon's report system. Let's see, I might be able to demo this one on the fly here. Let's see if I can do that for you. And, and you want to look at all the general reports that are available and fulfilled by Amazon because there's such a uh, quite a bit of them. So let's see if I can find the one in question. So so in here, if you put your cursor over reports, go to fulfillment. And then on the left hand side, I'm going to do control F for refund. Let's see if I can find it quickly. Sometimes they're hiding in the see more button. So let's click all the see more buttons. Refund. What? Seriously? Done. There's got to be a refund report in here somewhere. So maybe it's under payments reimbursements that might be no i think the reimbursements not not related to the refunds customer returns they had it under returns so in here if you run a, a customer's returns report you can see what what was the reason for the return and then see if you can see like if they're all damaged what was the problem then i would file a ticket with amazon to inquire uh, further about that definitely some challenges there hello right back at you rafa uh, been following a long time. What's the percentage you think we could do PPC? 5% of sales price or? So I would I would do 11% tacos. So for every $100 you generate on Amazon, I would put $11 right back in. Robert says, brand registry said, create a new case from your brand registry account, which is called rights owner account, not from your selling account. What does that mean? Just, just file a regular brand registry ticket on that one, Robert. Not a big deal. 
Uh, Mike says, can I sell NARF only in Mexico and turn off Canada? Because Canada, I ship into FBA. So, so yes, yes, you can. In addition to that, NARF is SKU specific. So if you wanted to have FBA on, just create a different SKU on the same ASIN using the same duplicate SKU ASIN video I linked up earlier. And then you can create as many variations as you want. You could have one for FBM, one for NARF, one for FBA. Completely kosher on any of that. You're welcome, Michael. He says, thank you. Right back at you. All right. So I've caught up on the member questions. I'm now going to go hunt for some good future member questions from Zizam. We got, hi, Stephen. The EBC content is in review from the last two weeks. Already opened multiple tickets, but no luck. Every time they say we cannot expedite the process of approval. Zizan, I got a hack for you on this one. Um, file an A-plus content with only one module and one graphic with no text, and it will go through within 24 hours. Then after you do that, do an edit to that same template that was previously approved. Fill in the rest that you have trying to get approved over two weeks and hit the submit button. Very likely, it'll go right through. And and, and it's, it's kind of a nice hack to get around the system. Don't know how long that one will work. Who knows? Uh, thank you, says Johnny. You're very welcome. Eugene, can you read my question? LOL. Yes, Eugene, I'm going to go hunt for your question now. Uh, this might take a second to find, but I will get to it right now. I'm on FBM for six years now without this problem. So I got to scroll up and find the other part of your question, I suspect. Past two months, gotten three A to Z claims on late delivery or lost items, which I appealed and lost. A customer had the ability to file a claim. They would need to first contact seller, as stated in Amazon policy. Customers had the option to file A to Z without ever emailing us, and it's an automatic ODR hit on my account. All right, so I'm going to try and make sure I understand this one fully. Uh, three A to Z claims, peeled and lost. So six years without this problem. The FBM um, system with A to Z claims has become a lot more problematic, Eugene. Uh, and that's, that's the reason for your situation. They did make a policy change. Um, so what you can do is you can fight the A to Z claims one-to-one -one by providing proof of of the solution to the problem. So generally speaking, people file A to Z claims if they want to do a return and you decline it. That's generally the number one reason an A to Z claim is filed by, by uh, the consumer. I also have um, one, of my, one of my clients is called CurbSign. By the way, if you need a sign for your curb, great client for this, great product. And they get a lot of A to Z claims because of the item getting damaged um, on the way to the consumer. Um, or quite frankly, the consumer damages it when they try and apply it. Huge pain in the butt. Um, and the solution is to ask the, the customer to ship, ship the item back or uh, to file tickets fighting the A to Z claim. And, and when you do the A to Z claim fighting those, you have to be very, so uh, lost items. So they were lost by the post office. Okay. So what you can do is file a counter A to Z claim. And I forget the actual title of the claim you need to file, but I do have a video on this. I'll see if I can dive in and find that after the, after the session today and send you a copy, Eugene. Um, the, the carrier is supposed to reimburse you for uh, a lost package or item, and you should be able to get paid as if it was sold. So what I would do is I would do two things. I would fight the A to Z claim through the Amazon portal and system. And the second thing I would do is I would file the claim with the carrier because the item was lost and not delivered. So Eugene, I know that wasn't a perfect answer for you today, uh, but hopefully that gives you something to kind of spark an idea um, to go through and, and do that. And then I am certain I've got something on A to Z claims. Uh, all right, so I, I do, I do have this video right here. Check this video out after as well, how to fight A to Z guarantee claims. And I don't know if there's an idea in here or not that will help you, but uh, give that one a whirl, Eugene. So post that in the chat there for you. All right, let's go to the next question here. Uh, let's go to the top and sign some future member questions here and see what we can find for a good question. About to launch two listings due to issues. If I delete them 24 hours later, make new listings and get different FN SKUs, will that cause issues with inventory relation to account due to different FN SKUs? Nope, not at all. They'll check in just fine. No problem there. Go ahead and safely ship those in. Uh, I got a bunch of questions coming in from JA. Do you think Amazon is becoming oversaturated with sellers? Uh, yes and no. I read a report where 2021 sales on Amazon were lower 
uh, than last year. Do you think Amazon will continue contracting and why? So here's what's happening. Amazon's raised the bar. You got to do GS1 code. You got to have your identity verified, all of this. And they keep raising the bar. But here's the thing. They opened the floodgates to China and they're purposely trying to get more Chinese sellers into the system. So uh, that's where the oversaturation is coming, in my opinion. But uh, do I think it's not? Do I think it's too late to launch an Amazon? 100% no. I just had a coaching call with a beauty product, um, and and I and I saw a massive opportunity for them to take advantage of the space. Even though beauty is a hard category, there's just a great opportunity to launch products still on Amazon, especially if you launch them now, going right into the Christmas season. There's never a better time to launch products than right, literally like next week um, on the platform. So. Uh, a lot of challenges, though. Never been harder. Logistics. A lot of Black Swan events, right? I keep the Black Swan. One of my other favorite books, not a business book, more of like a thinking book, if you will, is the Black Swan um, by uh, Nasib Nicholas Taleb, and and it indicts the bell curve and tries to make you prep for for non expected events. Shipping material, advertising costs, all inflated. Yep, that's happening. Uh, you got to raise your prices. That's that's the main answer. You got to raise your prices because if you lose on price today or if you win on price today, you're going to lose on price tomorrow. Build for your community, solve their problems, answer their questions and engage them and they will become customers for life. Just like I do in my Q&A session here, I'm adding value back to the community. You guys then add value back to me. Not all of you guys are going to become clients, but many of you will. Um, and maybe not today, maybe next year. Do you think the legislations against Amazon are going to be taken seriously? Nope, I do not. They are a monopoly in bed, literally in bed with the CIA, literally in bed with every portion of our federal government. They are not going to be broken up. They should be, though. Um, and I'm biting the hand that feeds me when I say these things. Uh, choose between kicked out third party sellers or stop selling themselves. Uh, they'll, they'll, they're going to they're gonna win the fight and they're not going to kick anybody out. It would, it, they, they're just not going to happen. If I let my FBA destroy my returns, do they actually destroy them or will I find them listed on my product page? They will actually destroy them. Great question, by the way. Um, if you can't see the join button, Glenn, uh, you might have to like put your credit card into YouTube, which can be a little scary for some people. I think that might be why you don't see it. Uh, if this bill gets approved, would Amazon choose to kick out the third-party sellers? Nope, they're not going to do that. I think it's all going to be taken care of. So I really don't see any risk there. Uh, can we use buyer images reviews on Amazon posts? Yes, they don't like it, but I've done it. You can get away with it. They don't like it, though. Uh, Skivora says, what's the name of the credit company that... Okay, I covered that one. Uh, Mohammed says, why the BSR has suddenly disappeared from the whole category? That means they deleted the category. We had this happen to one of our clients, which is Chirp Wheels. They have literally the best back pain wheel on the market. And they literally deleted the foam wedge category. No, no uh, heads up. Boom. Yeah, it's just deleted. By the way, they're on sale right now. 39% off. Highly recommend buying and picking those up today. Um, and, and it's just crazy that that happened. But yeah, like the foam wedge subcategory just completely disappeared um, like a week ago. It was super weird. Let's see. If, so when I put my cursor over, I think I was triggering some of their... So foam rollers, like if you click on this now, like when I clicked on it last week, this this literally disappeared. They were they were a top seller in it and then just gone. They might have brought it back since I looked at this a week ago because now I'm seeing it again. But yes, they randomly delete categories all the time. So if it's missing, you need to fill it back in. It can cause search suppression issues if you don't have a category ID set. Very, very important. Uh, let's keep... A lot of people want to talk about the antitrust case. I don't really have anything to add on that one though. I received a refund initiated email from Amazon. The reason states misfulfillment promise. When I checked, Amazon refunded the full value of the item and the shipping. Now what? They keep it. So Amazon is supposed to pay you for an item or return it back to you. So um, I asked my refund guy about this and they said that this is not something um, that people are generally filing tickets for. Um, they don't have a really good answer on this question. I highly recommend, um, though, that you do that because... Uh, you know, you, you should get that item back. Um, the video I posted last week, you can you can file some tickets and get a few hundred bucks right back in your uh, right back in your uh, pocket there very quickly. So let me see if I can find that particular video that we did. And it's all about clawbacks. Um, and we had people already posting on the video that they they did it themselves and had really good success with it. So let's see. Here's the video. I finally found it. Let me post the link to it. Give me a second on this one. 
Should put some hold music on, right? All right, so refunds. So check that one out, Kineski. That one might help you. Uh, let's go to the next question. So I'm going to see if we have any member questions in queue. We do not. So we're going to keep going. Uh, just signed up for Amazon handmade, but would, would, would I still be able to list my other items that are not handmade? Yes. In fact, you can even parent them together, believe it or not. Customized, customized version of the same product. hundred percent. You can parent those together. Got one of your ads in the mail. How did you know I sell on Amazon? So, so Eugene, uh, that makes me happy by the way. That means my marketing is working. Um, we purchased a, a, a list of all the Amazon sellers and then we narrowed it down based on category and based on who we think would be a good client of ours. We chose 35,000 of them and I spent $18,000 sending out a postcard um, to that selling list. And so that's how we got you. Um, your address is public on your, your, your Amazon page. And that's, that's something that changed about a year ago. So we took advantage of that. So hopefully, hopefully it doesn't feel too weird getting a random mailer from us, but we, we would love your business, Eugene. Check us out on that. Uh, can you link Etsy sales to Amazon? No, not possible. I'm launching a product in UAE. Will you recommend doing keyword research in the US or UAE or both? I would do the keyword research specifically in the UAE. Some, some tools don't do that though. So pull in info over from the US if you have to. I've received monthly reimbursements from Amazon for damage or missing inventory, but when I check the reports, they only ever paid me 50% of my selling price. Um, so, so Amrit, what's happening here is they're paying you as if the item sold. So they are paying you fully for it, but it's like they take out the referral fee and the FBA fee, which comes out to be usually around 35%. So 50%, that's a lot. Um, but yes, they pay you as if the item sold. So give that a whirl. Uh, hopefully that's a little bit helpful and make you sleep easy at night. Brian says, we sent 400 units to Amazon, and in less than 30 days, they show up in Amazon's bin store. AMA said, we had to wait until December 5th to investigate what can you do. The only thing you can do is ship more product in. Um, certain warehouses get overwhelmed. I would recommend shipping in an emergency UPS case. Um, can't put more than 50 units in a case or 100, 150 units in a case. And and send that into Amazon. See if uh, you see if you can get a, a different warehouse, ship it to a different state, maybe, and sneak them in. But but no, you can't you can't expedite any check ins. They're super super backed up sometimes. Uh, don't like doing PPC. Can you tell me where it's possible to find a good VA? Um, so PPC VAs are impossible to hire. Uh, very very difficult to find. Um, Onlinejobs.ph that's a place we use quite a bit. Um, but but generally today. Our best PPC talent is finding us and we're putting out videos and we're always hiring. Um, if you're international, you want to put your resume in to hi get hired by my Amazon guy, send your resume to recruiting at my Amazon guy.com. If you're in the USA and you want to get hired by us, send your resume to jobs at my Amazon guy.com. Um, we're always hiring. We have 110 employees. Last time I checked as of this morning and you can find all of our jobs posted at my Amazon guy.com slash jobs. We spend a lot of time surveying our staff and trying to make sure, you know, we're doing a really good job. You can find testimonials about um, what our employees said. These are actual testimonials um, that, that customers have said. So we got video testimonials. We've got actual quotes. So what do you like the most about working at my Amazon guy, the fully functional remote work culture, the people, flexible schedule, uh, here's all of our core values, impatience, growth, tech savvy, strategic communication, and go extra mile. If you possess three or four of those five core values, we'd love to talk to you. Um, manager values, bedside manner, soft on the people, tough on the issues. Um, those are the types of managers we're looking for. But yeah, we, we had all 100 employees um, tell us what they liked about working at my Amazon guy. You can see all of their comments here. We also did a survey. So we did one in July. And then we did one in September. Do you have the tools to do your job? Gave us an 8.7, which is not too shabby back in July. We've now raised it to 9.21. Asked the same exact question just several months later. And then would you recommend working at my Amazon guy? Got a 9.3 back then, really high. And we've slightly improved it to 9.36. This is an aggregate number that includes every member of my company. So this includes both US and international employees. Very, very high numbers. So if you want a job, go to myamazonguy.com slash jobs. We're always hiring, always looking for talent. Most of our best employees find us on the YouTube channel. So we always appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Let's keep looking for another good question in here in the list. 
Uh, let's see what else we got. Why did Amazon sales go down these three quarters? It was growing. Do you think sales would continue going down and why? I see that's not only Amazon, but e-com in general. Source, Marketplace Pulse. This is a true story, by the way. Um, ever since about uh, July of this year, we've seen softer sales. And it's because um, there was major, major boon in the industry. Um, and now, ever since uh, the change of the government, we've seen inflation drastically go up. We've seen um, supply chain woes drastically increase. LA Port was a case example. And quite frankly, I do foresee a weakening of e -com going into next year. Now, I'm bullish on the Amazon platform. If you, if you follow the best practices, you will increase your sales. You will gain new customers on Amazon. Full, fully believe that with my heart. But I do believe it's still a softer market right now. It's harder which is why you should hire us because we know how to navigate the softer market. However, what happens is a lot of people will try and minimize their costs in times of uncertainty. Um, a lot of people got pushed out with mandates. A lot of people quish, quit their jobs um, and that's caused a lot of uncertainty. So anytime you have an increase in uncertainty, you will see the economy get hit. Personally, I think we're heading into one of the worst econ economic shapes we've ever had in the history of the company history of the country. Um, I wish I was the company of the country. And, and I think, uh, I think we're going to see some really hard times going into next year, truth be told. So some things that you, so what do you do about this, right? So that's a very bleak statement I'm making here. Um, what do you do about this? Number one, you want to get your money out of cash. You want to invest it in product. The more product you have possession of, the more discount you just bought the product on. So for example, if this if this beer glass normally cost me a dollar, next year it's going to cost me a dollar ten, a dollar quarter, and so the costs keep going up. So if I dump a bunch of money in and buy bulk today, I'm buying the product on discount. That pads your margins for next year. So that's the number one tip I give people: buy a year supply of inventory right now. Um, but yes, it's it's been a little bit more rough of late um, and a little bit more challenging. So. Uh, all right, so let's go down. So scary Amazon suspends million dollar account permanently without hesitation. Companies like Dixing and Aki. Yes, um, generally speaking, these are rebate uh, users who have violated some of the TNC. Most of the big suspensions are happening for real reasons. Um, but I do like to say that there's a nice 80-20 rule being applied here. If Amazon can get rid of 80% of the bad actors and they get 20% of the good actors with these changes, I firmly believe they will take those actions. So two out of two out of uh, 10 good actors get suspended for no reason at all, which really, really stinks. But yes, we have seen that Amazon is suspending accounts um, in, in large. We saw a bunch of Chinese sellers get suspended. Like the top 20 Chinese sellers in the entire country of China got suspended um, off the platform because of rule violations and a bunch of other scary things that they're doing. When should we register the brand after first shipment or before shipment? So get your trademark now, in my opinion, you are supposed to be live with a product. Technically, um, the way we get around that is we just create a web page for it and take pre-order sales. But yes, get your trademark early because listing your products without the trademark is very problematic. Highly recommend. And, and for those that don't know, uh, we sell trademarks. Uh, and if you haven't, and if you're going to load a new brand next year, get that trademark today, 825 bucks. Uh, we'll file that same day for you. Turn that around for you. So I highly recommend it. Uh, Patrick says, what will be the way for succeeding to still more and more saturated marketplaces building a brand? Sorry for broken English. No problem there, Patrick. So what you need to do is build a community. If you win on price today, you're going to lose on price tomorrow. Like I said earlier. So what you need to do is answer the top 10 problems of a niche. So just like I come in and I add 800 videos of content on Amazon and I tell you all of these solutions to all of these problems, I built a community every Friday, hundreds of you show up and ask me questions. Same thing needs to be done by you as a brand owner. Now, maybe you're not doing Q&A sessions about why your supplement's the best supplement in the world or why you got to drink from my beer glass versus your beer glass. That's not what I mean. But like if you are selling um, a particular product you need to narrow the target demographic so narrowly that you could understand what magazine they'd buy, where they're going to be on a Friday. Do they like bowling? 
all of those things. You need to understand your community hardcore and then build content that that that, that particular niche appreciates. So for example, this is the, the funny example I use on this one all the time is Russian mail order brides. It's an absurd example on purpose to be memorable, right? But th if I asked you who's the target demographic of Russian mail order brides, it's three-time divorced truck drivers. And that's because they they've been around the block, they travel, they need they need some social companionship, but they may not have the social skills or the time or the location to be able to obtain said value in a relationship. And so if you know that the three-time divorce truck drivers are your target demographic, then you have a series of other topics you can cover to reach that audience and, and really make a difference. So I highly recommend that. Um, how to set launch date of a product on Seller Central. So this one, this one's actually really easy. I will demo it right here for you. And let's go into one of my products on the screen here and hit edits. So in Seller Central, hit edit on any product from the inventory page and go over to the offer tab. Sometimes they put it in here. Offer start date, there's one of them. But in the more detail section, there's two more fields, launch date and release date. It's a little confusing to know like what's the difference between a launch date and a release date. But basically, launch is when it can be available for sale. Release is when you can first see it, um, see the data. I recommend filling in both. So if you don't want your item to be purchasable until you have all of your A-plus content up, your FBA up, all that good stuff, here are the fields you need to change in the more details section. Give that a whirl. Let me know how it goes. Uh, does the customer keep it in the end? Uh, they can, or and, and if they do, you'll get paid for it. Otherwise, the item will come back. Is there a case for PPC AI software like Quartile, Perpetua? Uh, we just surpassed 200K uh, in sales. Um, there is for cost reduction. We're also really big fans of Ad Badger, um, but it's not, no software is good for, for growth. They're only good for cost reduction. So if you want a growth strategy, you still got to hire a human like me to come in and build it out. Obviously, I'm biased when I say these things, right? I don't know if anybody you guys, you guys ever remember the, the, the old cartoon in the 90s with Baloo and the, the airplane, and then he loses the race to the, to the robot, but then the robot gets attacked by, um, pirates and the pirates take over the ship. Same concept here. A robot is going to do something super predictable, stable, and routine, but it can't think outside the box. Amazon just added four different rule types. They, they add new creative. You got to add text, images, all of these things robots can't do yet. So I, I still recommend having an agency or a PPC dedicated member to navigate, load new products, advertising, create new segmentations, and strategy. But for, for doing um, cost control, 100%. AI is super good. Patrick says, thank you, Stephen. You're very welcome. The Amazon widgets are out of hand. How do you hide unwanted ones? Um, I might need an example on this. I'm not 100% sure what you're saying. If you're talking about accessories or add-on items, um, I don't know if you have a solution for that. What should be the intervals of checking a PPC report? Depends on the spend. Could be every day, but in general, minimum of once a week or twice a week. Um, if you do it any more than every 48 hours, though, it can be um, not enough data to report on. Didn't get your link for the refund clawback regardless. So myrefundguy.com, by the way. Regardless, if Amazon pays me, does the customer get to return the item for free? Uh, so if, if you're getting paid by Amazon, then no, it's a, it's a non-issue. Customer doesn't need to put a return out because they kept the item. I'm going to go hunt for a few more questions I haven't gotten to yet. Uh, let's see if I find any, so I think we read that going back up, see some of these I missed, put some hold music on. How's that? Uh, let's keep going. Looking for a good one here. We covered a lot of good ones today. Uh, Zivika says, appreciate your answers. You're very welcome. Best, oh, here's a good one. Amrit says, best software to use the monitor VA workflow. First time using a VA from Philippines. Any advice? I recommend Time Doctor. Um, so it's a little big brother, truth be told. Um, it can take screen grabs randomly at random intervals to make sure that they're on task. But when you're hiring a VA and it's a completely remote environment, you never meet them in person. It's really the only way to gauge um, that accuracy, right, uh, of the activity. 
a lot, the number one problem we have in managing um, remote workforce overseas is that there's, there's a culture of two timing. And so what happens is, is they'll do a lot of really great work for you for two weeks. Now all of a sudden they go a little MIA, all of a sudden they picked up a second job and it's a really bad cultural problem, especially in the Philippines. And so um, we require full-time work to work at my Amazon guy. And so one of the ways that we, we gauge that again, little big brother, um, we use time doctor to help with that. Um, we like to judge based on results and, and we love doing that. But when you have a hundred people to look after, or even if you're just busy running the rest of your company, you need a little bit of peace of mind to know, um, that they're, that they're, they're working on, on the things that they tell you they're working on. Uh, is there any way to know how much Amazon is charging me when the customer returns my FBA product? Yes. In the FBA fees report, you can analyze the cost of the shipment out to the customer and back to you. So basically, if it normally costs three dollars and fifty cents to ship an, uh, a beer glass out, and your item sold for twenty bucks, they will refund everything, including the referral fee, but not the three dollars and fifty cents to ship the item back and forth. So that's that's the that's the only thing that will be done on that. Um, and then we got a few questions from Zika. Here we'll go to um, Zavika, if that's how you say it. You said you're not a big fan of Amazon's transparency program, and that's because it doesn't add any value unless you have a wide distribution network. Do you think it's better to pay eight cents per label in exchange for protection from hijackers on the listing? Generally, no. Um, and that's because if you have brand registry and you load your content to multiple countries, you generally won't get a, a hijacker. It, it's, it's a problem when you have a big distribution network and you're selling your items to multiple partners outside of Amazon and then they randomly show up on Amazon. That's the problem. Uh, it takes some time to perform a test buy and report to Amazon. In the meantime, you're losing sales and risking one-star reviews. Yes. Um, trademark infringement reports, though, pretty effective. I don't think it's a really big problem. Um, I'd say the transparency program is only really needed by somebody that's got like a super wide distribution network on Amazon. Um, and getting rid of hijacker, sometimes it's really fast, sometimes same day. Other times it takes weeks and a little bit of, a little bit of messy on that. Is Pakistan a good country for hiring VAs because Fiverr, Fiverr is almost all filled by Pakistanis? Um, there, there, is, there is some good talent in Pakistan, 100%, yes. Um, I like the Philippines. It's probably my favorite. Um, we probably have uh, 20% of our international in Pakistan, though. It's pretty solid. Um, the Pakistanis are way more engaged. They network better, and they're, they're, they're in the field. So my prediction is Pakistan will become one of the best hubs for future VA talent over the next couple of years. Right now, it's all, you can't tell the good from the bad. It's pretty hard. Over time, they will set themselves apart. Um, and it will be more and more apparent. Uh, this is my wife. Are you talk, taking, uh, talking about the show Tailspin? Tailspin, that was it. Yes, Baloo and the robot. Uh, you, you got me, Emily. You got me, yes. Uh, if we use your services for trademark and register in the US, can we also use the brand registry for Europe market head? If we're working with you, can you confirm? Um, yes. So in the US, you can file a brand registry with a pending trademark. In other countries, that's not the case. So yes, if you use this to file a trademark, you can file those other countries, but you may not be able to do it immediately like you can in the United States. Uh, do I need to have brand registry to remove hijackers on listing? Yes, 100%. Got to have trademark. Got to have a brand registry. Also, it will prevent them from showing up in the first place. Um, I was ungated for a brand category without needing me to submit a purchase invoice, but if I try and add a different item of the same brand, I'm being prompted to submit a purchase invoice. What gives? Um, it could be just an algorithmic thing that they feel like you have as a seller cleared certain hurdles and they're going to give you access to parts of the brand, but not other parts. And it could be um, could be that they've gated that one item because if they've had lots of reports and problems with customer reports, more likely the problem. Eugene was asking about widgets on the seller page. Uh, so in the seller dashboard, can you get rid of widgets? Um, no. The answer to that is no, unfortunately. Uh, you can customize it, I think a tiny bit, like you can drag and drop them, but I don't believe, I don't believe you can get rid of them. Unfortunately, why is the stock market going up so quick? S and P 500 going crazy. Um, the, the stock market is completely artificial based on government and big business getting in bed together. So anytime the stock market does well, it's, it's, it's almost arbitrary. Sometimes it's not real reasons. It's, it's more like Excel arbitrage. Um, and that's why. And, and, and the proof of this is you see a black swan event come every so often, knock out the stock market where they do corrections. Um, so that's why cryptocurrency, probably a little bit more of a fan of that. 
um, than holding in, in the stock market today. Um, there's still a lot of good buys out there, a lot of good tech companies I would invest money in. Um, but yeah, uh, stock market, not my, not my favorite thing. Although I do have, I do have some stocks I hold and, and, uh, not, not financial advice, but I do think Asana is a great stock to hold. Um, those dudes went up 500% over the last year. Great product. That is our, my Amazon guy podcast today. If you want to express your gratitude for everything we've done today, can you just put thank you into the chat? Just say, thanks. What was your favorite thing about it? We'll put a few of those on the screen before we wrap up today. Um, it's fantastic talking to everybody. I love answering questions. We do this every Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Um, however, next week, it's Thanksgiving, Black Friday. I will not be doing a Q&A session next Friday. I hope all of you guys get lots of turkey and have fun with Turkey Day. Um, don't forget to raise your prices for Black Friday. You got to raise your prices for Black Friday because inflation is crazy. We'll put a few thank yous on the screen now. Thank you coming in from J.A. Uh, Abdullah, thank you, Stephen. Cindy, thank you. And Laura, thank you. You guys, all very welcome. I appreciate everything you guys do. Hannah says thank you. Skivora says thank you. And we appreciate everything you guys do to support the community. If I did not get your question today, don't hesitate to repost it as a comment to the video. Um, if somebody else asked a question that you know the answer to, add back to the community and add your own answer as well. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. It's my pleasure to serve the community. It's us against Amazon, not me against you, other agencies, not one seller against another seller. You guys all have a great one and, and enjoy Turkey Day next week. We'll see.